Hi, this is Brian. Welcome back to another Heroic Plus One. In our last Plus One, we talked about your recovery time. Pop quiz, how fast can you recover from life's inevitable glitches? That is one of the most important skills we can ever develop. Now, to master the equanimity recovery game, we need to know that we will inevitably experience a glitch or 101 today. When we know that, we will inevitably fall short of our standards of excellence. We don't freak out the moment it happens. Like the great golfer who makes a bad shot, we say to ourselves, ah, there's my first or second or tenth bad shot today. Then, rather than spiral out in shame and really go off the rails numbing ourselves from the unacceptable lapse in our pursuit of perfection, we simply practice some targeted thinking radically accepting our own imperfections and the challenges of the moment, getting clear on what we want, and then doing what needs to be done. No drama, no big deal, just another day in the philosophical office. Now, I finished creating that plus one and then went back to my normally scheduled AM protocol, finishing reading my notes from my session with Phil. Then I thought of Rick Rubin and his great book, The Creative Act. And I reopened my Mac and decided to create this plus one. So let's get to work. First, quick context. As you know, if you're a fan of hip hop, Rick Rubin is a legendary music producer. He's worked with some of the most iconic musicians in the world, from Adele, Tom Petty, Johnny Cash, and the Beastie Boys, to Jay-Z, Kanye West, and LL Cool J. He's also the co-founder of Def Jam Recordings and former co-president of Columbia Records. And he's a transcendental meditation practitioner who writes with the same lucidity as Yuval Noah Harari, whose preferred flavor of meditation happens to be Vipassana. Now, the creative act is the distillation of the wisdom he's gained working on himself and his craft over the last 40 years. It's phenomenal. I highly recommend it. Get a copy linked in this plus one and check out our philosopher's note also linked in this plus one. So although I didn't talk about it in my notes, one of the ideas he shares in the book was about the Beatles. Apparently, when the Beatles had an inspiration for a song, they worked on it immediately and didn't stop until they had a complete draft of it. I got goosebumps as I typed that in all caps. Think of the Beatles, they have an idea for a song, and they crush it until they have a complete first version. They do not have the inspiration, get a little into it, then say, ah, oh, they'll come back to it again. Why? Because there's something magical in the moment of inspiration. And when you've created enough stuff long enough, you know that it's really hard to capture the felt sense of awesome of an idea a week later. As you look at your notes you made when you were inspired and try to bring it back to life. That's why Ralph Waldo Emerson says this in Self-Reliance. He says, your goodness must have some edge to it, else it is none. The doctrine of hatred must be preached as the counteraction of the doctrine of love when that pules and winds. Then he says, and I emphasize this in the plus one, I shun father and mother and wife and brother when my genius calls me. I would write on the lentils of the doorpost, whim. I hope it is somewhat better than whim at last, but we cannot spend the day in explanation. He says, expect me not to show cause why I seek or why I exclude company, end quote. And that's why I just hammered this plus one. It's one of the ways I've disciplined myself to create at a reasonably high level for a reasonably extended period of time. And that's today's plus one. Let's remember Stephen Pressfield's wisdom from the War of Art, where he tells us, and I quote him, Someone once asked Somerset Mom if he wrote on a schedule or only when struck by inspiration. I write, only when inspiration strikes, he replied. Fortunately, it strikes every morning at 9 o'clock sharp. Let's remember that, and let's remember Rick Rubin's Beatles wisdom, along with Ralph Waldo Emerson's doorpost, as we create the conditions for our daimon, aka genius, to inspire us, then respond appropriately when inspiration strikes. It's day one. We're all in. Let's go. P.S. Check out plus one number 
819 called Do It Now Part 1, in which we riffed on some John Maxwell wisdom from his great book, 15 Invaluable Laws of Growth. In that book and in that plus one, Maxwell says, we quote him saying, in 1974, I attended a seminar at the University of Dayton where W. Clement Stone spoke on the subject of having a sense of urgency. Stone was a business tycoon who had made his fortune in insurance. His session was titled, Do It Now. And one of the things he told us was this, before you get out of bed every morning, say, do it now 50 times. At the end of the day, before you go to sleep, the last thing you should do is say, do it now 50 times. Maxwell continues by saying, I'm guessing there were about 8,000 people in the audience that day, but it felt like he was talking to me personally. I went home and for the next six months, I actually followed his advice. The very first thing every morning and the last thing before I went to sleep, I repeated the words, do it now. It gave me a tremendous sense of urgency, end quote. If you feel so inspired, let's get our 50 reps in now. Do it now, 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 do it now. Do it now, 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 do it now. Urgency established. Well, now it needs to get done. Get on that. Repeat.